Welcome to Bladed Tech Musings, the channel dedicated to retro tech, innovation, science, and technological entertainment. The newest branch of the U.S. military, the U.S. Space Force, conducted its first major operation in its very short history. Before you get excited, let me assure you that it wasn't sending a platoon of space infantrymen to the International Space Station in response to an emergency. It wasn't the launch of a space fighter squadron to low Earth orbit in order to interdict the satellite of a rogue state. It wasn't even to post guards around Cape Canaveral in order to bolster security. No, the Space Force launched a classified communication satellite. Somewhat anticlimactic, isn't it? Actually, the U.S. Air Force coordinated the launch of a classified communication satellite, with the Space Force taking credit. A United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket lifted the sixth and final advanced extremely high-frequency military communication satellite to Earth orbit. The AEHF Constellation's unclassified purpose is to provide secure communications between the U.S., its allies, and warfighters on the ground. For the same price SpaceX would have charged for 240 launches, or about $15 billion, Lockheed Martin built and launched six classified satellites, including this latest one, with a big assist from the Air Force. I mean the Space Force, of course. The AEHF network is a follow-on to the Air Force's Milstar Communications Constellation, which last launched in 2003. The Air Force coordinated the launch of the other five AEHF satellites in August 2010, May 2012, September 2013, October 2018, and August 2019, all before the inauguration of the Space Force. We at the BTM channel congratulate ULA, the Air Force, and the Space Force on its achievement, but the launch merely accentuated the fact that the Space Force, for all the aspirations of President Trump concerning space superiority, and all the pundits taking cheap shots at the nascent military branch, is really nothing more than a patch that service people are wearing on the BDUs. The Space Force doesn't have uniforms, personnel, facilities, or equipment. Right now, the Space Force is just a PowerPoint presentation slide. After a usual preview of prior channel episodes, let us explore the 2020 mission of the U.S. Space Force and how it differs from public perceptions popularized by movies like Ad Astra and where the service needs to evolve to be relevant in the United States space race off Earth and to the rest of the solar system. <laughs> When one thinks of the U.S. Space Force, we must be forgiven if the name invokes images of the famous scene in Moonraker, where U.S. Space infantrymen launch out of armed space shuttles to do space combat with evil mercenaries. The film was released in 1979, at the very height of the space shuttle era, and well before the awful destruction of two of the shuttles in launch and re-entry accidents. It was at this time that the shuttles were proving to be useful at all sorts of missions. So, it wasn't a stretch for United Artists and the Bond film producers to update Ian Fleming's famous 1954 novel with laser weapons, a clandestine space station, and fighting in orbit. The reality is more down to earth, pun intended, and I hate to say it, pretty disappointing. The Space Force is actually a rebadged Air Force Space Command, which was nothing more than several launch pads, some tracking stations, an airlift squadron, ballistic missile research and development, and a few communication and positioning system satellite constellations.
Career-wise, the Air Force Space Command was an ignored corner of the Air Force. An Arctic posting to the North American Aerospace Defense Command were notwithstanding, where junior engineers, mid-level bureaucrats, and less promising or nearer retirement officers were rotated to, while fighter jocks led combat missions, won promotions, and landed choice posts in the Pentagon. Space Command was proof that airlift or materiel didn't have a stranglehold on dead-end assignments. This second-class status has not stopped with the absorption of Space Command into the Space Force. The Space Force is subordinate to the Air Force, which made more sense to political allies of the Air Force when the new service branch was formed, so as to not wantonly bleed off money and relevant resources from the Air Force. And perhaps just as important, the Air Force preferred the public seeing its officers flying NASA missions and pushing the buttons to launch nuclear and orbital payloads. The initial public mission of the Space Force is, unsurprisingly, to support Air Force air superiority objectives. This includes securing its own launch rocket system to ensure that the Air Force is able to launch satellites separate from NASA's priorities. Those satellites are intended to guarantee ground and air combat communications and battlefield coordination. This ground side focus is reflected in the initial officer specialties assigned specifically to the Space Force. These include space operations, intelligence, cyberspace, and logistics, conspicuously omitting any combat specialties and obviously targeted to orbital control, information warfare, and program management. In fact, the Space Force has to obtain personnel through the Air Force Service Academy and basic training commands. It also is supposed to have an initial draw of personnel from the Army and Navy to get the service started, but it is clear that money and resources are still at the beck and call of the Air Force. This is similar to the relationship between the Navy and the Marine Corps. The most telling statistic is the meager $40 million budget the U.S. Space Force is allocated in 2020. This is supposed to be beefed up to $15 million in 2021, but as this has to be carved out of the Air Force's traditional budget, it remains to be seen whether or not this will be carried through. The Air Force's fiscal year 2020 budget is $166 billion, with $14 billion dedicated to space operations. Some hint of the future of the Space Force beyond the basic national security need to provide orbital assets for surface battlefields, allied coordination, and strategic assessment may be found in an unexpected quarter. The X-37B space plane, most recently flown late in 2019 and expected to fly next in June, was the Air Force's proof-of-concept platform for orbit-capable vehicular requirements. It now falls under the purview of the Space Force, and this is where things get interesting. We covered the X-37B in episode 13, a link to which has been provided below. On a tactical level, space interdiction of hostile orbital targets with the X-37 and its derivatives is a certainly feasible alternative to ground-to-space missiles. But strategically, the explosive growth of commercial space ventures with plans to regularly ply the space lanes to Earth orbit, the Moon and Mars, presages the need for a space superiority fighter and sport installations to ensure against the interference of bad actors. The X-37 program logically represents the forefront of development along these lines. So what is the future of the U.S. Space Force? Will it remain as the Air Force's errand boy? Or is its formation harbinger of the robust off-Earth frontier to come? Only time will tell, and I suspect that the very success or failure of commercial companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin will ultimately determine the Space Force's future and eventual strategic mission. Do you agree with our analysis? Drop a comment below to let us know what you think. Regardless, we hope you enjoyed this briefing on the AEHF-6 communication satellite launch and the U.S. Space Force. If so, click that like button. Let us know that you want more of these type of episodes by clicking the subscribe button. Activating the bell icon will also make sure that you receive notifications of new episodes. Links to material related to this video, the BTM channel, and select previous episodes can be found below. Save the link to our Instagram account so you can get early updates to our channel. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, where we announce all new episodes. Thanks for watching!